On this week's Bottom Line, the other unfortunate thing about the United States healthcare system. Senate delayed its new health care bill. Lots of unhappiness about the bill. Polling approval is only 17% of Americans actually like it. Um, huge cuts to Medicaid in it, 20 million projected to lose their health insurance over the next 10 years. So lots of angst about this. While the Senate is going off to rethink things and come back with another bill, I um, think it's, it's worthwhile looking at the U.S. healthcare system. One of the big issues with it that makes it suboptimal is the fact that healthcare in the United States is tied to employment. This is very unusual in the world, but we have developed a system in this country where you get healthcare in association with your job. You need to have a good job. It's very good for companies that work at big, or com people rather, that work at big, stable companies that can afford it. It's also fine for the companies. At Business Insider, for example, we are happy to help provide great healthcare for our team. We want that for them. But for everybody else, you're kind of screwed because it is very difficult to buy health care outside the, uh, the confines of a company where, where you can actually pool things. This is what Obamacare was designed to do. Obviously far from perfect, plenty left to fix. But part of the problem is that our system is tied to health care. And it's interesting to look at the history of that. This really came from first started with companies in dangerous industries like mining would have doctors on staff to help when they were accidents. And so there were, there, we started an early transition in the 1800s of having companies associated with healthcare. Then things really got going um, during World War II where we had wage controls. So companies couldn't raise wages, so what they did was improve benefits for employees to try to attract them. And that started, company provided healthcare. Then after the war, lots of tax advantages where this became a tax deductible expense for companies. Again, very different than being on your own, where it's not often tax deductible. Then, when folks figured out in the 1970s, hey, the problem is that not everybody is working. We have a lot of older people and poorer people. Then we brought in Medicare and Medicaid to fill things in. And over the course of those 20 years, from the 1950s to the 1970s, we went from fewer than 10% of Americans having health insurance to more than 70%. So that's where our employer-sponsored health care system came from. Um, again, the problem is, and this contributes to why the United States has one of the highest per capita expenditures on health care and some of the worst results in the first world um, is this problem of it being tied to employment. We need to have a system that covers people anytime, whether they are working or not, in an affordable way. And, and one of the ways that it seems that we can do that is with some sort of public option, something that looks like Medicare or Medicaid, that you can opt into if you wish to, again, outside of your employment. But that is the other unfortunate thing about the U.S. healthcare system. It is tied to employment, which ultimately is okay for those who are employed, but not okay for everybody else.